much do you know about your artwork? Better yet, how much does your artwork know about you? So today we're going to talk about really getting to know your artwork. And I don't mean looking at it and being able to say it's this color or that color or this medium. I'm talking about what your artwork has to say to you. Now, you might think that you know everything there is to know about your artwork, but I'm willing to bet you you don't. See, we make our artwork and then we look at it, and maybe we give it a title, and maybe we don't, and then we kind of move on to the next piece of artwork. But the thing is, if we know enough about our artwork and if we listen to it closely, it's going to tell us which series it's a part of, it's going to tell us the title, and it's also going to tell us the topic. So, all the reasons you need to know your artwork, the most important one. Have you ever been in this moment, you go up to an artist and you want to talk to them about their work, and then they reply with, well, I don't really know what to say about my work. Or they say something like, well, it's acrylic. I could read that on the card. And I understand you don't like to talk about your artwork, except that actually I don't. See, here's the thing. To me, those answers are telling me you're not listening to your artwork. And it's a really big turnoff because if the artists themselves don't really know what the artwork is about enough in a confident way where they can talk about it, it tells me something about the artist. And I think it's important that we know everything we can about our work. The main reason that I think this is true is because our purpose is somewhere buried in the work. And if we don't know what that purpose is, or we only think we know, we're going to have a very hard time talking about it. We've faced our fears and we've gotten out there looking at art and we've done all this thing, all of these things to kind of lay the groundwork to be able to get to this point, listening to your work. And it has a lot to tell you. So how do you get used to listening to your work? We've got you on that one too. There is a download called Getting to Know You. In that download, it's basically a form that walks you through taking a look at your artwork and defining things that are absolutely not about your artwork. The day of the week, the songs you were listening to, the mood of the day, one thing that happened that day, maybe a little bit about the color palette, maybe a little bit about your intentions when you were making that, your mood at the time. I said that a couple of times because our mood is typically based on something that happened. And that can translate into our work in funny ways. And knowing those things allows us to set up series. Now, you might have three or four different styles, and they talk about consistent voice and only showing your best work. Well, that's true. I agree with that. But only as it relates to series. And unless we know our artwork and know exactly which series that a particular piece falls into, we can't actually define if it's the best or if it fits or if it's a consistent voice. So let's talk a little bit more about consistent voice. There's this big trend to only show one style of work because that will be consistent voice. What that shows me is that you're kind of a limited artist. And a limited artist is not particularly of value. I mean, we're an artist, we're supposed to be creative. Doesn't that mean we're supposed to be able to do more than one thing? I believe that consistent voice comes down to the series. Each series of work should be consistent. It should be consistent in look, topic, feel. And from there, I don't care if you have 50 different series, although that might be a bit much for anybody to take in. But I myself have photography. I have five different series that I put out there on a regular basis. I have a painting group I put out there. I have a mixed media group I put out. And in the mixed media group, there's three different series. You see, I'm defining a category for each of my pieces of artwork. And how I got to that was really simple. It was easy in the photography. There's a tree series. There's a Milwaukee series. But if we go a little bit deeper to the mixed media, by filling out this form and thinking about these things as, as I was done with my artwork, because that's where it fits in my process, I realized that what it came down to in my mixed media group, that these were emotions I felt. And these emotions were based on a singular moment that changed who we are. 
Do you see what just happened? In that line right there is the basis for my entire artist statement. It's the basis for me to be able to have talking points. It's a series. It's about the moments that change who we are through an emotion we felt. But as I dug deeper, I realized that some of those pieces were actually about the people I've met that have changed me or that I've learned from. And then there was a third group that was really about the um, things I have found, like finding serenity and finding peace. Those aren't really emotions. Those are things I found through different experiences. Now, the mixed media pieces, if you were to take them and jumble them all together, seem somehow disconnected from each other. But when you divide them into separate groups, suddenly there is a clear and consistent voice within each of the categories. And it's the same with my painting. That's exactly how I do it there. Now, what I have been told is that filling out this form only needs to be done maybe 10 to 20 times. And from there, the seeds have been planted so that you kind of know this instinctively. And that's kind of what we're wanting you to get to. Instinctively understanding where your art is coming from and what the topic is. I mean, most of us don't sit down with the intention to create a piece on world peace, but yet it happens. And where that came from can help guide us to what we can say about it, what series it can go into, and many other things. So knowing your work is critical. Being instinctively knowledgeable about it is really very important. How do we trust our instinct? Well, we've learned to face the fears, to get past the fears, to have some confidence to be able to take a stand. And that's truly important because as you go out into the world, all kinds of people are going to ask you all kinds of questions. It could be kids saying, how do you do this? All the way up to curators and jurors asking for a deeper explanation. And somewhere in the middle, viewers who are attracted to your work. Maybe they just want to know more about where it came from or what mood it was or some detail that goes beyond 20 by 30 acrylic stretched on canvas wall ready. Uh, that's kind of a basic given. I mean, so often artists that I talk to give me basic givens. If I can see it clearly, I really don't need to be told it. And you shouldn't be saying those things to other people either. You should be able to talk about your work like it's your best friend. This is really, for all intents and purposes, your child. You have created it from nothing. Would you talk about your child that way? Please let me introduce you to my child, a six foot four male who's 21. That just doesn't work, does it? So what if we take those concepts of knowing it deeper and applying it to what we can say? The only way we can do that is if we know our artwork. Now, the actual process of this, I actually don't want you thinking about these things when you're making the artwork. Unless, of course, that's what fits into your process. You're going to have to do some trial and error to find that out. When you're making your artwork, I want you to be working from an instinct place, fearlessly. When you're done with it, I want you to be able to really take a hardcore look at it and say, this is where it came from. When you get about 10 to 20 of these done, you can then take those sheets, read through them, and you're going to notice some common trends. It could be the type of music you were listening to. It could be the color palette. It could be the day of the week. It could be some mood you were in. And when you analyze it, you're going to see that some are like others. And those are the series. And you're going to see that some are not like others. And that's a different series. By dividing your work into series, you're going to make your consistent voice really solid. And you're not going to make the mistake of only putting one style of work out there. It's scary to me when people put one style of work out there. What? Are you a one-hit wonder? Are you stuck in a rut? Where are you going? Where are you headed? What fuels you? If I see one line of work, and that's it. I really think that that's a limited artist. And I actually don't know a single artist who only does one thing. Do you? I mean, how many different types of mediums do you have? Now, once we get them worked into the groupings and the series, we can dive a little bit deeper and determine more specifically where they come from. That will help you name the series. And once you do that, Maybe you have titles for some and maybe you don't. I mean, how many times have I heard this? 
I hate naming my pieces. I don't know what to name them. Again, knowledge is power. And by getting to know your artwork and listening to it, you're going to learn so much that names will become easy. Names will become really easy. In fact, you might hear something in the back of your head, a tiny little whisper that's giving you the name. But are you listening? And this goes back to that your artwork is a product of you. So you have to be self-aware. You have to be listening to yourself and your artwork. I mean, the reality is listening to your artwork is just another way you can listen to yourself. That's kind of amazing if you think about it. I mean, how many people have this amazing thing called art to be able to help inform them of who they are, where they're going, what's on their mind, or what's bothering them? Within those topics, you're going to figure out these different groupings. And those different groupings are then going to lead to what might be the best venue for you to be showing at. What might be the topic of conversation where there are things outside of the art world that you can link up to. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about in the next video. And I bring it up because it is so important to understand your work. Because without understanding it, then anywhere and everywhere you go might be okay. See, systematically what we're doing is we're narrowing down the number of things you need to do as an artist. You know, all the things the gurus tell you. Be on every social media. Be on, you know, have a website with every bell and whistle. Go to every show you're invited to. Be everywhere. But being everywhere isn't actually smart. One, it's very expensive to be showing work. It costs a lot of time to be doing social media. And there's a lot of risks we can take by showing at the wrong place. Let me just give you a really good example. My work would not fit in at the quarterly um, showings of gallery night in Milwaukee at the ACLU. There is no topic comparison here. And it's not that I don't believe in what the ACLU does. I truly do. Point being is the ACLU and my work don't actually fit together. I don't do activism artwork. So for me to show my work there would be a very much a disconnect between the people who like that show and the people who like my work. So why would I say yes if they were to have asked me to show? Now they didn't, that's not the point. I just wanted to make an obvious statement for you. Here's another one, the watercolor flower show. If I'm a landscape artist, I probably shouldn't be applying for it. That kind of makes sense, right? So knowing all of these things about your work is what can help you to make really smart decisions and not listen to the gurus who tell you to be everywhere and do everything and try for everything. That's not to your benefit. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of energy, and in a lot of cases, it can be a waste of money. So truly understanding where you are and listening to your work can really dictate making the smartest decisions you can for where to show your work, which jury shows to enter. All of those things matter because if I expect you to spend 75% of your time making art, then that other 25% has to be of value to you because otherwise this just doesn't work. So you taking these steps with your art, while it might seem very self-intrusive and scary and redundant and stupid, is actually quite critical. So you can take 20 pieces of old artwork or archived artwork or early artwork, and you can do the process with that, and that will start getting the thought process in your head to just look at these things you know, in the back of your head or after you're making your art, or you can do this going forward. Either way, make sure you take this step because this is where knowing your hashtags start. It's knowing what Facebook groups to join. It is knowing what to say about your work and then about yourself. You see, this is the guts. This is the meat. It actually brings words to your artist statement. It pulls everything together. So go about getting to know your art fearlessly. Go on about you know, knowing what it has to say to you and be open to it. You might not always like what it has to say to you, or maybe you think what it's saying is too big of a risk to take. Figure it out, and then you should probably go take the risk because if it's something so deeply in you that it comes out in your artwork, it's probably something that would be spectacular for your career and your business, and it will give you all of the ability to talk about what you do. And that is what will make your artwork accessible.
You can put your artwork wherever you want. You can put it anywhere. But if you can't talk about it when somebody approaches you, then it's not accessible. And that is a very big problem. All kinds of artists have learned this skill. And they are the ones who are gaining a following, an audience, and fans. You need to be that artist too. That artist willing to make your work accessible. But the only way you can do it is to really get to know it and listen to it. So, download the form, get to know a bunch of your work, and see where it takes you.